Welcome, soul visionaries and potential soul visionaries. I am your host, Sherrod Cohen, and you are now entering the Soul Vision Powercast, a place where we keep it unfiltered and raw. We'll discuss anything from porn to politics. We'll even talk about things you might have heard or even saw. Today, we're going to talk about a thing called pair bonding. Pair bonding. What happens to your brain after having too much casual sex, getting it in too often? No connection, just banging, banging, banging. Let's kick it. Man, 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 dig this here. What happens to your brain after having too much casual sex? Or like we say, too much fucking with no connection. You know, too much fucking without connections. This is what happens. You can make it harder for yourself to permanently bond with someone else. Tracy Luke, I believe her name is. This is a 2020 article. You know, they did some studies on this. And the article starts off by saying, I've always been a ride or die kind of girl. If you could unlock the achievement of getting into my pants, I would take a bullet for you. I'm open to trying many things, but only within the confines of a committed relationship. And I take my relationship seriously, passionately. Although nowadays, I can't help but feel like I'm part of a growing minority. Dating apps aside, what the euph euphemism next flicks and chill connotes is very telling of our current views of sex. A modern cold word and an invitation for hookups sounding like a leisure activity for when you're bored on a weeknight. She says she has friends who have friends with benefits. People married with kids sleep around on the side. Some even cross borders over the weekend for a booty call, one swipe and one flight away. Thanks to advancements in technology, finding casual sex has never been easier. But what's more, it is increasingly seen as a cultural norm. Is it all just finding flings, or does it affect us in ways that are more than meets the eye? Man, ain't that something. Just out here giving it ass away. Just giving it up, giving it up, giving it up. Love and sex in the brain. Biological anthropologist Dr. Helen Fisher suggests not to have sex with someone unless you're prepared to fall in love with them. In her work outlined in the video, Casual Sex Doesn't Exist, she speaks of how humans have evolved three brain systems when it comes to finding and most importantly, keeping a partner. I'm trying to tell, when these women are out here saying, I don't need a man, I don't need a man, the men are trash, that's because y'all done fucked everybody. That's why you think all men are trash. And then from the studies that goes around, it's only a certain certain kind of guy that gets the majority of the females you know there's a small percentage of men that's impregnating most of the women because a lot of men aren't getting ass on a regular basis all right three brain systems the sex drive craving for sexual gratification romantic love elation giddiness euphoria and craving of passionate obsessive love three attachment feelings of calm and security with a long-term partner it is possible to be in love with someone before sex or the opposite occurs where you catch feelings after doing the deed. There is no control over which brain regions lights up leading to romantic love or attachment. Any one of these systems could fire up and in any combination or all three at once. Hormones released during orgasm such as oxytocin and vasopressin also primes us for binding with our partners. Sex is more than a physical act. Dr. Stephen A. Diamond of the Psychology of Sex describes it as such. Sex is a way of lessening our alienation, isolation, and aloneness by physically connecting with, penetrating, or being penetrated by another person at the most primal level of existence. Sex substantiates, humanizes, and incarnates uh, existence. It produces joy, love, comfort, affection, and sometimes ecstasy. Now, if you just out here just giving your ass away, you probably would not experience any one of those things because you're, there's something else going wrong with you. You're trying to use sex as a way to numb some type of pain or whatever. So if you out here just fucking just for the hell of it, man, it's, it's, it, it'll, it'll ruin you later on. I, I know some women right now that are just like not cool right now. That is some deep stuff, and yet our lax views of sex could be damaging, not only for society as a whole, but there are negative impacts on our brains if we overdo it. Pair bonding. 
Research, research from the Medical Institute of Sexual Health goes on to illustrate the importance of oxytocin when it comes to bonding. Casual sex leads to a decrease in this neurochemical production and interferes with what is called pair bonding. Repeated sexual encounters with multiple partners rewires the brain. When an individual chooses to engage in casual sex, breaking bond after bond with each new sexual partner, the brain forms a new synaptic map of one night stands. This pattern becomes the new normal for the individual. I don't need a man. I don't, but then y'all out here fucking everybody because you need that, that itch scratch, but you just don't know how to latch yourself to one man. You just out here banging, bang, 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 bang. All right. This pattern becomes the new normal for the individual. When and if the individual later desires to find a more permanent partner, the brain mapping will have to be overcome, making a permanent bond more difficult to achieve. Like I said, when I hear all these women out there like, I don't need a man, that's because you didn't fucked everybody already. There's nothing left for you to give. Your synaptic nerves, the, the map has been changed. It's all screwed up. Effects on mental health. In one study, those who had more sex without strings attached were found to be, on average, less satisfied with their love lives compared to young adults who have frequently, who had, a, who had sex frequently in a committed romantic relationship. So that means those that's having sex, so just say this person has 10 partners over here or 15 and they have sex with them 200 times are less happier than the part, the couple were right here that just had sex 200 times with one another. <laughs> Pair bonding. Not all hookups are created equal. It varies greatly depending on the individual and circumstances. Some, has a po some have a positive response and feel better about themselves. Interestingly, those who had feelings of loneliness and depression to begin with reported a reduction in negative emotions afterwards. But there are downsides where participants who engaged in casual sex reported an increase in both depressive symptoms and feeling of loneliness. Negative feelings also include guilt, regret, and low self-esteem. Another study adds to this and points to lower levels of happiness and higher anxiety and depression levels. Perhaps the most alarming finding is how some people may tend to engage in casual sex even if they do not feel comfortable doing so. They just fuck because they think they have to because it's just I want it but I don't want it fuck it let me just do it it ain't shit Mis misperception of sexual norms is one potential driver for people to behave in ways they do not personally endorse now they're asking is the hookup culture wrong because you know we in this hookup culture where women say hey we can just go out and fuck anybody we can be just like men and just have sex with all type of folk right is it right or is it wrong with children growing up in a world of technology inundated with choices of instant gratification that extends to sexuality, I am concerned with trends going forward. Even adults struggle with online addiction and have a hard time with the influx of dopamine hits. That attention is a motherfucker. How can we expect developing minds to cope in a responsible and healthy, healthy manner? While I don't advocate abstinence or waiting for marriage, I'd hope that when my kids are old enough to experiment, they can do more, they can be more mindful of what they consume and who they share their bodies with, especially when the dating pool horizons have expanded into the world wide web. As with anything in life, I believe less is more. In response to his thoughts of promiscuity, I agree with Saguru's words. It is not a question of morality, but a question of how to live sensibly. Now the takeaways from this was, the science is loud and clear, we are meant to bond with another when we have sex, whether in a committed or non-committed relationship. Casual sex bypasses the human need to engage emotionally and develop intimacy. That's why you get these women out here that just say, you know, it's just sex, it's just sex. But then it's just sex only until it's time for them to find someone that they want to settle down with. When it's time to settle down with, a lot of times, Men are like, you know, when they find out like, damn, oh, you was a bust though, or you, you just got ran through by everybody. Then they start to push back or just use you only for sex. Now, all of a sudden men are trash, but you weren't thinking about these things when, <laughs> 
when you was out there just laying up while you were young. So that's why I tell young ladies, stop listening to these older women that are bitter, don't have anybody, or just chasing a bag, going on girls, tripping this and that and the other. Don't listen to them. Live your life in such a manner that you respect yourself early in your life. Because if you respect yourself early in life, men will respect you later in life. Trust me. Now, hooking up is not an issue in and of itself as long as it isn't overdone. But how casual sex is increasingly seen as a social norm should raise questions. How much is too much? Shouldn't the standard be to foster meaningful relationships? There are consequences beyond the physical that aren't immediately noticeable. The truth is that people can damage their ability to bond, but it is not because of a decrease in oxytocin production. It is a much more complicated process involving brain molding over neurochemicals and higher brain functions. In a rare project spanning across generations conducted by the Harvard study of adult development, 722 men's lives were tracked for 75 years. Psychiatrist Robert Waldinger summarizes the findings in his TED talk. In his TED talk, what makes a good life? Lessons from the longest study on happiness. The clearest message that we get from this 75-year study is this: good relationships keep us happier and healthier. Period. What matters the most is the quality of those relationships. Who you get laid with is no exception. On the science of monogamy, scientists examined data from 16,000 Americans to answer the question, how many sexual partners does it take to maximize happiness? The answer is one partner in one year. Dating apps may have expanded your reach and increased your potential to have sex with more partners, but playing the numbers game can be a significant disadvantage in the long run. We don't take one another seriously if we do not feel a perceived lack of options for dating because there is always availability elsewhere. You can easily go someone or swipe for the next match, but doing so makes instant messaging for sex premeditated and robotic in nature. How can a person so readily exchange body, bodily fluids with another but fall through with communication and connection? And it's become backwards. So it's like this. We are here fucking, but we can't even talk. You see what I'm saying? You, you'll give up your ass, but you won't give up what's up here. You, you, you won't give up your thoughts. You won't tell me what's going on. You know, I've dealt, I've dealt with women that, that were so, that weren't intimate. As far as, you know, you, when, you, when you start talking intimate, you can tell where they got uncomfortable and now they have to skew the conversation someplace else. They had to take the conversation from talking intimate and about relationships to the dog, the cat, the, 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 the whatever. You know what I'm saying? So uh, research has shown that social media and technology have extended our social network and our number of interpersonal react interactions. However, moving our relationships to digital environments and the growing use of digital technologies are also associated with less depth in our connections, increased loneliness, and less satisfaction with life. Using apps for the sole purpose of sleeping around without strings attached makes each potential match optional, sex transactional, and the act recreational. This commodification of dating and hookups, which has proliferated, is a culture that is harmful in excess. In a world connected globally, it appears we are more disconnected than ever. After all, there is nothing casual about sex. And that's what I've always said. As technology advances, our humanity takes a step back. You see what I'm saying? So we're losing our humanity, but we're gaining technology. Be careful out there, man. Sleeping with all these different people, man. You got to realize every time a man releases inside you, man, you're taking a piece of him with you. And he's taking a piece of you from you. And so, so many women, just by listening to him, have allowed so many men to just take pieces of them and tear them up to where now they're not even whole women anymore. Just think about it. Peace.